The following report was recently broadcast on the News Hour with Jim Lehrer. Can, uh, can you sit up without doing back. all that right now? Well, no, no, I'd be up to, here. Okay, See, but if I, I was going to... I need you to slide back. back. Yeah, in a tiny I'll San Francisco up. backyard, yeah, filmmaker Rob Nilsson is directing two actors in a film called Scheme. It's about a homeless man and his father, a cop, and it's being produced for a fraction but, of the cost of a high-budget Hollywood but film. We're, going, we're moving, so I'm going to probably keep this wide. Nilsson's cameraman is using a digital video camera, a DV cam that records images much like a computer does. The camera itself is cheaper than a traditional film camera and costs about a third that of a professional video camera. And the tape is cheap. Filming digitally encourages the spare approach, a far cry from the techniques of most movies or TV shows that employ legions of extras, stand-ins, gaffers, camera operators and assistants, caterers and makeup artists. For Nilsson, who follows the action through a monitor built into his goggles, the advantages of the new equipment amount to a revolution. Nowadays, having small little cameras to get you into every little nook and cranny without having to worry about a whole lot of lights and a big crew and a big truck. Cheapness, accessibility, and I, I contend that it's a more intimate medium. And action. Nielsen says it works well for his style of filmmaking, where the focus is on the actor's spontaneity rather than special effects. A host of filmmakers like Nielsen are using the new technology to produce hundreds of new films and documentaries that would never have been made otherwise, because now the filmmakers can afford to experiment. In terms of its cheapness for young, young people starting out, or even old people still, still with a fire, <laughs> in the belly, this is the art of the possible. This is something you can do. No matter, no matter what Hollywood says, no matter who doesn't want to fund what idea, we as artists can go out and we're going to make our film, no matter what the world says. No. As for the video quality, Nielsen says it's different than film, more gritty, more real. It does have those qualities. Now, will it when it's blown up on a screen coming from DV cam, be quite as lustrous and Hallmark card-like? Probably not, but we've seen that. So do we need to see it again and again? I heard you was out playing games again, Count and Coo. After a day of shooting, Nilsson takes Count advantage of another Davis. aspect of the digital age. And they aren't happy with you, cops. He gives his rushes to an internet company and immediately puts them on its website so that anyone with a connection to the internet can look at them and comment. We got 10 in yesterday, 15 today. The website distributing Nilsson's rushes is iFilm, founded by Roger Raderman. He says that because of digital technology, film distribution is undergoing a revolution as profound as filmmaking. It's been enormously difficult for those filmmakers and artists out there to take their films and put it in front of a mass audience. Um, the upside is that every film doesn't have to be totally commercially viable anymore. Um, it doesn't have to um, go on television. It doesn't have to go on theater. There's another outlet right now. Um, what we have to remember is it's very early days, and we're going to see more and more prominent uh, directors and filmmakers and actors begin uh, producing films for the Internet. Raderman says you can watch most movies on the Internet for free today, but eventually there may be a charge. One problem he faces is that not everyone can easily watch movies posted on websites. I tried this on my computer this morning, and I had a hard time getting any motion in the, in the picture. What's going on? Um, it, it could have been a, a number of things. You might have had an older computer that didn't have enough processing speed. It didn't have enough horsepower to, to deliver the goods. Um, more likely, it's that you didn't have what's called bandwidth. To be closing all the time. Bandwidth means getting lots of information pictures, sound, text, into your computer by using a direct, high-speed, high-capacity connection to the Internet, not just a modem and a phone line. When you're talking about high-resolution video and audio, it's a lot of data that has to go through that pipe, and most people don't have that, that, the, a fat enough pipe yet in their home. Raderman predicts that in 10 years or less, most movie fans will be able to bypass the video store and maybe even the cinema and get films off the net. In fact, some Hollywood heavyweights are already investing millions in distributing movies over the Internet. There have been situations where 
um, the thing. Documentary filmmakers are also benefiting from the digital revolution. Yeah, it's, it's very Berkeley. John Ells, who teaches graduate students filmmaking at the University of California, says digital video encourages more production at a time when funding has dried up. Some of those documentaries, he says, are very good. This one, Long Night's Journey in Today, about South Africa's struggle with its own apartheid past, was shot with inexpensive equipment and won an award at Sundance, an independent film festival. Else, a judge at that festival, says making that film was possible only because the producers could act quickly. When an idea strikes, the documentary filmmaker does not have to hunker down for a year or two or three to raise a half million bucks to make the movie. They can bite the bullet, go with their credit card, you know, buy a cheap little camera, a cheap little editing system, get on an airplane, go to South Africa, go to Thailand, go to Alabama, make the movie. At least get it started. At least get it off the ground. And Else says that's good for American society. You know, I mean, the more documentaries that get made, uh, including lousy ones that'll never get shown, the more documentaries that get made, the better off American citizens are. Uh, it's like having, you know, it's better for the country to have more newspapers rather than fewer. You already know the best actors, the best comedians. While most people may never make a documentary or a feature film, the new technology is now available for parents and grandparents to make and edit home movies. Maybe you should be a director. Apple Computer's CEO, Steve Jobs, introduced its new system last year. We think this is going to be the next big thing. Desktop video. The iMovie is a system to edit home movies on an iMac computer, costing less than $1,500. Okay, so we've just captured the video from the camera, and now we're going to start assembling it. Actually, For Apple, the key to selling so iMovies, iMovies is the simplicity. Marketing manager John Bass contends that editing home movies will bring out the director in any hobbyist. Yeah, we're looking at, at a software application that's called Final Cut Pro. Apple and several other companies have also come out with new digital editing systems for professionals. Selling for $9,000 to $15,000, they are 10 to 20 times cheaper than many editing systems in use today. You can pick up all of these components for less than $10,000. That's much less than the industry standard. This Avid editing system, which costs about $200,000, allowing for very high quality work. But for some filmmakers, quality is less important than getting inner-city youngsters involved in the process. In San Francisco's Tenderloin neighborhood, these teenagers are making movies about their own lives in a program run by Spencer Nakasako at the Vietnamese Youth Development Center. Now, say you want to do that edit and you want to lay it down at the end of this clip. So we've got our inner... On this here. day, the kids were being taught how to edit the material they shot on digital DV cameras that they were given to document their personal stories. Where the, the, the sort of DV revolution is, is helpful is that we're able to get stories that we never could get. Um, in say 16 millimeter or with uh, when Betacam first came out simply because you know working with young people you know and this small format is the accessibility number two we can fail I mean you try something that doesn't work you try something else I mean it allows that experimentation allows us to go after stories that maybe are chancy and we start them up and they don't work and so we just dump them and go on to something else Nakasako and the kids have had some of their documentaries broadcast on national television. In many cases, a lot of times the kids will think, my story is not important or my story isn't very interesting. And then when an audience sees it, they actually go, wow, people are interested. People are, you know, uh, uh, do want to know what's going on in my life. All the video that we shoot, yeah. we end up digitizing and putting on Nakasako's teenagers justice for independent filmmaker Rob Nilsson digital video is simply a tool to enhance the artistry it's the poet's stubby pencil is what we have now and the poet is not is not sitting there wondering how much lead he's got left he's doing it passionately immediately right there and that's that's what video is to me 
While the digital video revolution is encouraging independent filmmakers, no one is predicting it will replace Hollywood's blockbusters. But it has already had an impact that will only grow as the technology improves. The NewsHour can be seen weekdays at 3 and 7 on KQED Channel 9.